Hi, my name is Andy Van Zant, and today I'm going to show you seven simple detection mechanisms you can use in your Mario Maker 2 levels. For example, everyone knows that you can use a thwomp to detect whether you've walked underneath a specific area by putting on-off switches, P-switches, POW blocks, or ball bombs below them. But I'm trying to take you a step beyond that and hopefully help you come up with lots of cool ideas for your levels. Most of the time you'll want to hide these mechanisms just off screen so the player can't see them working. But for this video, each mechanism will be shown inside these black semi-solid blocks on screen, and I will do my best to explain what's happening for each of them. To keep them simple, all of the mechanisms can only trigger one time each, but I'd like to make a video in the future detailing more complex constructions that can trigger multiple times. This first mechanism is one you may recognize from uh, some other levels. Uh, it detects whether or not you turn to face left. As soon as I turn to face left, Boo tries to move towards me, and the muncher on top of its head also moves with it and crushes the bob-omb between it and the on-off switch, exploding the bob-omb and triggering the on-off switch. Um, obviously, you can flip the elements in this to have it detect whether or not you face to the right instead. Uh, as with a lot of these mechanisms, you could have it do something besides flipping a switch. Uh, for example, this one explodes the block, dropping the muncher onto a P-switch. So let's go through the door and check out the next mechanism. So here you can see a mechanism above my head, um, and you can see these red uh, blocks around this door. Um, and if I hadn't flipped the switches in the previous room, these red blocks would be on and I would not be able to progress. But this mechanism above my head uh, prevents that from happening. Um, and the way that works is that if the switch is turned so that the red blocks are on and the blue blocks are off, that muncher would fall onto that bob bomb, triggering that on off switch. So let's test that real quick. So I hit the switch and I walk through the door and the red blocks are on, but are immediately turned off by the mechanism above my head. Uh, and you can do that the, the other way, but this, this helps you make things work consistently from room to room. You don't have to worry about whether somebody hit a switch multiple times or uh, something else weird happened that you couldn't anticipate. You can make sure every room that, that the player enters has a consistent switch state. The next mechanism we're going to look at is a left-right detection mechanism. Um, so right now I'm on the left side of this cannon, uh, and you could place this cannon uh, set up in the middle of a room, uh, just off screen, or anywhere you'd like, really. So I'm on the left side right now, and uh, so we've got the L lit up. Um, but when I move to the right side, the cannon will fire, and the right will show up. And and I think you can tell what's going on there. The, the cannon can only fire when it's not being blocked, and uh, as soon as it fires, the switch is hit, and the projectile is destroyed. And we've just got a buzzy beetle helmet in there. Um, you'll notice this is a little slow to respond. It's not instantaneous. But it's still very functional, especially if, if what you're having the, the player do takes uh, takes a few seconds to, to enact. And there's several different ways to have a left-right detection mechanism, actually. Uh, so, for example, we've got a clown car with an enemy in it, and he's always trying to get to me. So he's, he's bouncing against that wall. Um, if I move to the other side of him, he hits the music block and drops the muncher onto the P-switch. And again, that's that's a little slow, but that's okay. This one is a little faster. This is a, a, a thwomp, and as soon as I move to the right side of the thwomp, he zooms forward and triggers that on-off switch. But obviously it doesn't check for back and forth motion. Um, so what's, what's an even better mechanism we could do? Well, let's go through the pipe and look. So this is the nighttime version of the ground theme in Mario Brothers. And in the nighttime version, power-ups and various other things behave a little bit differently. Uh, in specific, power-ups try to run away from you. Uh, so right now that, that mushroom up in the block is, is trying to get away from me, and you can see it kind of wiggling against the wall there. As soon as I walk past it, it will try and get away from me by going the other direction and very quickly trigger that block to drop a muncher onto the P-switch. Um, and just like other mechanisms, we can have different things happen. So as soon as I move past this one, it'll drop a muncher onto the bob bomb to trigger the on-off switch instead. And you could have it uh, triggering POWs or various other things if you'd like. Even more interesting than that, maybe, is the poison mushroom in the night theme. 
the poison mushroom is actually always trying to get to uh, Mario, or in this case, Toad. And as you can see, it's kind of pushed up against that wall and it, can, it can't really move much. Um, but as soon as I walk past it, it will try to run towards me and again, trigger that music block. And that's, that's uh, pretty useful, right? Um, we've got another one though with the poison mushroom here. The poison mushroom in the upper right is still trying to reach me, um, but uh, the poison mushroom is one of the smartest enemies in the game. It'll actually do things like uh, jump to try and get you. And if you have a superstar, it will try and run away from you because you're invincible. So as soon as I grab this superstar, this is our next, next detection mechanism, uh, the poison mushroom will trigger. And so it, it detects whether or not you have a superstar. And it happens very quickly. Um, our next mechanism, again, works only in the night theme. So, so the, these two ones, the, the star detection mechanism and, the, and this one only work in the night theme, whereas the, the left-right detection works in different themes, just in different ways. So this one detects whether or not you jump. And the way that works is that the Mario Brothers 2 mushroom jumps when you jump. And in uh, 3D World, you can use skip squeaks to do something kind of similar because they jump when you jump. So if I jump, it jumps and it jumps on the music block. So we've got a simple jump detector. So let's, let's go back and check out what's happening in the daytime. I've got a big mushroom there, and that's important because the next mechanism we have is one that detects uh, whether or not you've got a big mushroom. You'll notice right now that it is a fire flower, and that's because it's a progressive power-up. Um, it uh, is a mushroom if you don't have any power up and if you are big, uh, it will be a fire flower. So right now, this mechanism doesn't do anything, right? But let's go uh, remove my big mushroom and then re-enter the pipe. So we've gotten small. We walk back into the pipe and the mechanism has now detected whether or not I was small and triggered the switch appropriately. So our next mechanism, and our last one, detects whether or not you are playing dead inside of a dry bones shell. So we've got a boot, a uh, Goomba inside of a Karibo shoe attempting to reach me. So it's bouncing against that wall. I get inside this dry bones shell, and as soon as I play dead, uh, it, will, it will stop trying to reach me and jump away and trigger the mechanism. And this particular one uh, drops a spring onto a buzzy beetle helmet and the, the buzzy beetle helmet runs into a pow. And that's just to kind of show you a different uh, thing besides the other examples I was giving you. So in this video, we had mechanisms uh, for detecting which direction you are facing, uh, what state the on off switch was in, uh, whether you're on the left or right side of a room, whether or not you have the superstar power up, whether or not you just jumped, whether or not you have a big power up, and whether or not you're playing dead in the dry bones. So I hope that helps you with some ideas for your levels and I'll see you next time.